In the second part, I would provide uh, some guidance to financial markets. In the third part, I would announce uh, some additional measures and uh, we have a number of uh, them this time. And in the fourth part, uh, which is the concluding part, I would uh, conclude by uh, spelling out our approach in uh, the coming months and uh, going forward. The Monetary Policy Committee met on 2nd, 3rd and 4th December. It reviewed current macroeconomic and financial developments, both domestic and global, and the evolving outlook for the Indian evolving outlook for the Indian economy. At the end of its deliberations, the MPC voted unanimously to leave the policy repo rate unchanged at 4%. It also decided to continue with the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary, at least through the current financial year and into the next year, to revive growth on a durable basis and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target going forward. The marginal standing facility that is MSF rate and the bank rate remain unchanged at 4.25%. The reverse repo rate stands unchanged at 3.35%. I wish to take this opportunity to express my appreciation of the committee members for their valuable insights and guidance that contributed to the monetary policy decision taken today. I would also like to thank our teams in the Reserve Bank of India for their analytical and intellectual support and logistical assistance. Let me begin by setting out the thinking that went into the MPC's decision today and its rationale. The MPC was of the view that inflation is likely to remain elevated with some relief in the winter months from prices of perishables and bumper kharif arrivals. This constrains monetary policy at the current juncture from using the space available to act in support of growth. At the same time, the signs of recovery are far from being broad-based and are dependent on sustained policy support. A small window is available for proactive supply management strategies to break the inflation spiral being fueled by supply chain disruptions, excessive margins and indirect taxes. Further efforts are necessary to mitigate supply side driven inflation pressures. The MPC will monitor closely all threats to price stability to anchor broader macroeconomic and financial stability. Accordingly, the MPC decided today to maintain status quo on the policy rate and continue with the accommodative stance as long as necessary, at least during the current financial year and into the next financial year, to revive growth on a durable basis and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the economy while ensuring that inflation remains within the target going forward. The year 2020 has been extremely challenging. It has tested and stressed our capabilities and even our inner reserves of strength, patience and fortitude. As the year draws to a close, it would be appropriate to review our actions and the outcomes as we battled against the pandemic. What stood out in my view in all this endeavor was our determination to fight and overcome every trial that was flung at us. I am reminded here of the words of Mahatma Gandhi and I quote, strength comes from an indomitable will. Drawing lessons therefrom, I shall try to set out our vision for the way forward. 2020 in fact has been a year to remember. When the definitive history of this pandemic period is written up, the year 2020 will be recorded as a defining year in the history of modern civilization marked by the great pandemic comparable in its scale to the Spanish flu of 1918 and exceeding the economic losses of the Great Depression of the 1930s. The COVID-19 broke out even as the world was gripped by a synchronized slowdown in activity. And this is precisely what uh, made uh, the agony even more excruciating. Alongside this human and economic tragedy, history will also record the unprecedented response by central governments, by central banks and governments, healthcare systems and personnel, 
civil society organizations and above all the common people. Together we have managed to contain human losses, ensure that financial systems and markets function normally. We have kept finance available and, flaying, uh, and flowing and reached out to the most vulnerable. The result was that near-term financial stability risks have been contained. Economic contracts, contractions have started to ease. Portfolio flows into emerging markets have recovered and hard currency bond issuances have strengthened for those with stronger credit ratings. Throughout this period, the Reserve Bank acted preemptively to face head-on the challenges posed by the virus and manage the fallout of the pandemic on the Indian economy. Our overall endeavor is that going forward, output and employment losses get quickly recouped in an environment of macroeconomic and financial stability. With preservation of financial stability and depositors' interest being uppermost in our agenda, we could swiftly resolve the situation at two scheduled commercial banks. We remain strongly committed to preserve the stability of the financial sector and will do whatever is necessary on this front. While we are constantly focused on strengthening the regulations and deepening our supervision, financial sector entities like banks and NBFCs in particular should give highest priority to quality of governance, risk management and internal controls. They are the first line of defense in matters relating to financial sector stability. The Reserve Bank's role as the debt manager and banker to the government was tested to the hilt in 2020, marked by the highest ever level of market borrowing. Our policies have resulted in the lowest average cost of borrowing in 16 years and the highest weighted average maturity of the stock. What I said in October, the importance of cooperative solutions for orderly market movements. We need to be competitive and not combative. Let me now focus on financial market outlook. The measures taken by the Reserve Bank over the year gone by have also resulted in a significant moderation in the structure of interest rates across the spectrum, narrowing of risk spreads and a record issuance of corporate bonds. Corporate bond spreads have in fact narrowed to pre-pandemic levels across the term structure. Financial markets have been working in an orderly fashion. The easing of finance conditions is in fact preparing the ground for strengthening the nascent recovery, the nascent signs of recovery that have become visible in the second half of 2021. These developments attest to the efficacy of the Reserve Bank's liquidity management measures, not just in lowering yields and borrowing costs, but also in building positive market sentiments as well as confidence in the assurances given by the Reserve Bank of India in October and the actions thereafter to anchor the guidance provided during the last MPC. Overall bond market conditions have evolved in an orderly manner and engendered a congenial conditions and engendered congenial conditions for other segments of financial markets that price financial instruments of GSEC yield curve. Debt management operations, monetary operations and market expectations are in harmony and share a common outlook. This augurs well for financial stability. I take this opportunity to commend market participants for responsible behavior and for contributing significantly to pr producing these positive outcomes. The Reserve Bank on its part stands ready to undertake further measures as necessary to assure market participants of access to liquidity and easy financing conditions. In the external front, the hardening of yields in the US reflects the lift from reflation trade. Prospects of political stability and expectations of fiscal stimulus have churned up risk appetite, causing investors to exit safe haven of U.S. Treasuries and search for returns. 
As a consequence, surges of capital flows have flooded into India. The Reserve Bank has been taking measures for dampening volatility and enabling orderly evolution of the exchange rate in consonance with the underlying domestic fundamentals. Mindful of the consequences of these actions for domestic liquidity and inflation, the injections of liquidity through forex interventions are being sterilized by absorptions through the reverse repo. We will continue to respond to global spillovers in order to secure domestic stability with our liquidity management operations. The various instruments at our command will be used at the appropriate time, calibrating them to ensure that ample liquidity as is available to the system. I repeat, we will use various instruments at the appropriate time while ensuring, and I repeat, while ensuring that ample liquidity is available to the system. Instruments like OMO purchases, operation twists, and reverse repos will continue to be used. Our paramount objective is to support growth while ensuring that financial stability is maintained and preserved at all times. Uh, let me now turn to assessment of uh, uh, the growth and inflation outlook. Uh, let me first set out the MPC's assessment of underlying inflation dynamics and the outlook. CPI inflation rose sharply to 7.3% in September and further to 7.6% in October, with some evidence that price pressures are spreading. The outlook for inflation has turned adverse relative to expectations in the last two months. While cereal prices may continue to soften with the bumper kharif harvest arrivals and vegetable prices may ease with the winter crop, other food prices are likely to persist at elevated levels. Cost push pressures continue to impinge on core inflation, which could remain sticky. Taking into consideration all these factors, CPI inflation is projected at 6.8% for Q3 2021, 5.8% for Q4 2021, and 5.2 to 4.6% in H1 of 21-22, with risks broadly balanced. Against this backdrop, we must now turn our attention to nurturing the recovery beyond meeting up of the pent-up demand and focus on setting it on a firm trajectory of sustained and high-quality growth. Data that have become available for Q3 2021 confirm that the economy is recuperating faster than anticipated and more sectors are joining the multi-speed return, the multi-speed upturn that I had highlighted in my statement in October. The contraction in Q2 in the NSO's end November preliminary estimates has turned out to be shallower than projected in October. The Manufacturing and Services Purchasers Managers Index, that is PMI at 56.3 and 53.7 respectively, in November 2020 remain in expansion zone. High frequency indicators of services showed stability and increase in the number of optics. In fact, I have spelled out some of these details in the annex to my statement, which of course I would not be reading out because uh, in the interest of time. The recovery in rural demand is expected to strengthen further, while urban demand is gaining momentum as unlocking spurs activity and employment especially for the labor displaced by COVID-19. These positive impulses are, however, clouded by a possible rise in infections in some parts of the country, prompting some local containment measures. At the same time, the recovery rate has crossed 94% and is rising, with considerable optimism on the successes in vaccine trials. Consumer confidence over the year ahead has also turned optimistic. Corporate results for Q2 2021 indicate that demand conditions are recovering and profit margins are rising on the back of cost saving on expenses and debt servicing capacity has also gone up. Business assessment for manufacturing firms has entered the expansion zone in Q3 2021 after remaining in contraction in the last two quarters. 
business expectations going forward into Q4 2021 are also rising. Turning to growth outlook, as I just stated a little while earlier, the recovery in rural demand is expected to strengthen further while urban demand is also gaining momentum. Consumers remain optimistic about the outlook and business sentiment of manufacturing firms is gradually improving. Fiscal stimulus is increasingly moving beyond being supportive of consumption and liquidity to supporting growth generating investment. On the other hand, private investment is still slack and capacity utilization has not fully recovered. While exports are on an uneven recovery, the prospects have brightened with the progress on vaccines. Taking these factors into consideration, the real GDP growth for 2021 is projected at minus 7.5. I repeat, the real GDP growth for 2021 is projected at minus 7.5. And the breakup would be as follows. The first two quarters are already known. And uh, for Q3, we are projecting plus 0.1 percent. And for Q4, we are projecting plus 0.7 percent in, uh, you know, as I said, in the Q4. So in other words, the H2 is expected to show positive growth. Uh, and, the, uh, and the projection for uh, the H1 of next year, that is 2021, is projected at 21.9 percent to 6.5 percent. Against this background, we, as I said earlier, our t focus, we have now turned our focus to providing further support measures in the interest of growth, maintenance of financial stability, and other factors which I just mentioned. So against this backdrop, the RBI will persevere with its paramount objective of reviving the economy with some additional measures in order to enhance liquidity support to targeted sectors having linkages to other sectors, deepen financial markets, conserve capital among banks and NBFCs through regulatory initiatives, strengthen supervision through strengthening audit functions, facilitate external trade by improving ease of doing business for exporters, and upgrade payment system services so as to expand financial inclusion and improve customer service. The ONTAP targeted long-term repo operations, that is the ONTAP TLTRO, announced on 9th October 2020 is now, will now be extended, will now be expanded to cover other stress sectors in synergy with the credit guarantee available under the emergency credit line guarantee scheme, that is ECLGS 2.0 scheme of the government. This will encourage banks to extend credit support to stressed sectors at lower cost. The next announcement relates to regional rural banks. RRBs are currently not permitted to access the liquidity windows of the Reserve Bank of India as well as the call or notice money market. With a view to expanding participation in money markets and to facilitate better liquidity management, regional rural banks will now be allowed to access the liquidity adjustment facility, that is LAF and marginal standing facility, MSF of the RBI and also the call or notice money market. With the recent enactment of legislation for bilateral netting of financial contracts providing a fillip to underdeveloped credit derivatives market in India, it has been decided to review the extent guidelines on credit default swaps and issue draft directions for public comments very shortly. The revised directions are expected to facilitate the development of credit derivatives market and a liquid and vibrant market for corporate bonds, especially for the lower rated issuers. In light of evolving, uh, in the light of evolution of the financial markets and due to various liberalization measures undertaken in the recent period, the comprehensive guidelines on derivatives issued in 2011 have been reviewed and draft directions are being issued today for public comments. The revised guidelines seek to promote efficient access to derivatives market while ensuring high standards of governance 
and conduct in the over the counter that is in the OTC derivative business by market makers. Comprehensive draft directions on call, notice and term money markets, certificate of deposits, commercial papers and non-convertible debentures with original maturity of less than one year are being released today for public feedback. The revised directions seek to bring consistency across products in terms of issuers, investors and other participants. These announcements which I made may look a bit, may sound a bit technical but I can assure you that they will go a long way in promoting, you know, in promoting and developing the corporate bond market and the derivatives market in India. Time will tell how effective they are, but we are very optimistic that this will definitely give a fillip to the corporate bond market segment and also to the money markets. Uh, let me now turn to regulation and uh, I will highlight uh, some measures relating to banks. In response to COVID-19 pandemic, the Reserve Bank has focused on resolution of stress among borrowers and facilitating credit flow to the economy while ensuring financial stability. In continuation of this effort and to help banks conserve capital while creating room for fresh lending, which is very, very important, especially in the context of post-COVID revival, it has been decided after a review that commercial and cooperative banks <clears throat> will retain the profits earned in 2019 uh, profits earned in 2019-20 and not make any dividend payout from the profits pertaining to the financial year 1920 the growing significance of nbfcs and their interlinkages with different segments in the financial system has made it imperative to enhance the resilience of the nbfc sector therefore it has been decided to put in place transparent criteria as per a matrix of parameters for declaration of dividends by different categories of NBFCs. A draft circular containing the proposed criteria and parameters will be released soon for public comments. As you can see, in most of the cases, we are releasing draft circulars, we are releasing discussion papers so that we get public feedback, we get stakeholders' feedback, and as I have always said, and this has been my consistent view, that such inputs received from stakeholders and uh, the public definitely deepen the quality of our decisions, enrich the quality of our decisions, and we will continue to pursue that. That is why we have been, you know, as I said, we are straight away not issuing the circulars, but we are putting draft circulars in the public domain for comments. Further, the current regulatory regime for NBFC sector built on the principle of proportionality warrants a review. It is felt that a scale-based regulatory approach linked to systemic risk contribution of NBFCs could be the way forward. As part of the stakeholder consultation process, a discussion paper on this subject will be issued before January 15, 2021 for public comments. Uh, turning to supervision, our supervisory focus in improving the governance and assurance functions in supervised entities continues to engage the attention of the RBI. In this endeavor, the following measures are being announced today. These pertain to, number one, introduction of risk-based internal audit in large UCBs and NBFCs, and number two, harmonization of guidelines on the appointment of statutory auditors for commercial banks, urban cooperative banks, and NBFCs to improve the quality of financial reporting. Details on these measures are in Part B of the MPC statement, MPC resolution, and the guidelines on these will be issued shortly. Turning to digital payments security, in order to significantly improve the ecosystem of digital payment channels with robust security and convenience for users, we propose to issue Reserve Bank of India digital payment security control directions for the regulated entities. Efforts are underway to ensure a calibrated unlocking of the economy with cognizance of and caution about the virus. While we remain vigilant, we must now turn to alleviating the scars left by the pandemic and revive the economy. The horizon has lighted up with a spate of positive news on the vaccines and a steady rise in recoveries. 
India's time has come to break free of the fetters of COVID-19 and reconfigure our destiny. We have come, we have borne with fortitude and courage the terrible havoc wrought by the pandemic. We have lost lives and loved ones, but not hope, not the conviction that we will overcome and emerge stronger. It is often said that life after COVID will not be the same again. But human endeavor has time and again shown that it is never too late to seek a newer world. We must reach out with a strong will to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield. I am reminded here of a quote attributed to Socrates. In the face of adversity, we have a choice. We can be bitter or we can be better. Obviously, we will strive to be better. Stay safe, stay well. Namaskar.